Hello there, you're watching Talking Europe. I'm France 24's Europe editor, Catherine Nicholson. Now, on the programme with us today, we have the European Commissioner for Health, Stella Kyriakides, uh, and we're going to be speaking to her just after the European Centre for Disease Prevention and Control released its latest risk assessment for the coronavirus pandemic in Europe. Now, the ECDC stressed that seven EU member states are particularly of concern. They are Spain, Romania, Bulgaria, Croatia, Hungary, the Czech Republic and Malta. Uh, so we'll take that as our starting point, Ms. Kyriakides. Thank you very much, firstly, for being on the programme. Thank you. Thank you for having me. So uh, we, with that data from the ECDC, uh, what kind of forecasts are you and the European Commission making for what's coming next in terms of infections and deaths? Is it going to be worse than the spring? Well, exactly. We do not want it to be not not only worse than the spring. We do not want to go into the same situation that we had in the spring. So yesterday, um, following the latest ECDC risk assessment, which you have already mentioned, uh, I made a very strong call to member states that they need to be extremely vigilant and to ensure that what we had asked for in terms of preparedness in July is in place so that we do avoid a situation similar to the spring and going into more generalised lockdowns. And uh, it was important that uh, uh, we made this call because this could be our last chance to be able to really contain the spread of the epidemic, which uh, of the pandemic, which, as, as we all see, is now causing uh, different uh, difficulties in a number of member states. So you've personally called on EU states to take immediate measures uh, to avoid another full lockdown. Just what kind of specific measures would you be advising? We're talking about stopping restaurants from serving people indoors, closing non-essential shops. Well, it, what what we had in fact cautioned, and we knew that this was going to happen, was that with the lifting and the much needed lifting, I would say, of measures and containment measures in July, that we would see an increase in, in cases. But we had also uh, asked member states to have in place a lot of testing, contact tracing, to ensure that their uh, hospital and ICU capacities were ready for an increase in cases. What we need now to address is that all all this is in place, together with the uh, advice given to citizens that we need to uh, ensure that there is uh, social distancing, mm -hmm. we wear our masks and hand hygiene. It's a combination of what uh, needs to be in place in order to contain this virus. Mm -hmm. The different measures taken are um, according to the situation in each, uh, in each member state. Mm -hmm. We have put forward very clear recommendations uh, that we would like member states to follow. Well, you mentioned uh, testing and tracing, uh, which the World Health Organization has also flagged as essential part of this. Um, now, those systems vary greatly in their effectiveness and implementation across the yes. various member states. Germany and Italy seen as doing particularly well, others not so much. Um, do you believe that perhaps national governments have just failed to take this seriously enough? Well, the call yesterday was that we need to take this very seriously. So clearly what is being done in, uh, in some member states possibly uh, is not proving to be as effective as expected or it's not uh, uh, followed through and we're not seeing the implementation of what is being said. But we are all in this together and I have been working very closely with member states from the beginning of the pandemic. So really the call to action yesterday is a continuation of this working together because I'm unless we all work together, we're not going to be able to succeed. Mm -hmm. This virus knows no borders and all efforts to contain it must come uh, bringing us all together as we have tried to from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Well, there have been issues earlier on in the crisis uh, regarding personal yeah. protective equipment, ventilators, for example. Some member states, including France, uh, blocking exports to other EU member states of that uh, vital equipment. At this point, facing the second wave, is there enough PPE to go around? 
Uh, you're absolutely right. There were problems and difficulties at the beginning. One would almost expect it because this was an unprecedented health, public health crisis. But we, we managed to solve them, I would say, and meet the challenges quite early on. Uh, we have, uh, as a commission, now have, a, have the, the in place uh, joint procurements for personal protective equipment for ventilators available to member states if they so need them. So we have also moved forward with therapeutics, so made sure that, um, for example, remdesivir has been available to member states through mm -hmm. joint procurement. So a lot is in place in case it is needed. Mm -hmm. And y yesterday the call to action was, in fact, to encourage member states to now use what we have in place uh, so that uh, if we have a further increase in cases, we are ready to be able to deal with it effectively. Well, speaking about medicines, uh, you mentioned the remdesivir treatment, but there's also uh, a lot of people really hanging on for a vaccine, of course. A host of vaccines being trialled. Uh, the EU's uh, got contracts uh, in place ready for vaccines that could work. How far off are we from these becoming available to the first European citizens? Uh, I truly wish I could give a date, but we're not able to do that. I can understand the anxiety and that uh, that everybody is waiting for the vac for a vaccine, because we know really that the the only strategic way out of this uh, pandemic is a safe and effective vaccine. As you said, the EU has a, a, a vaccine strategy in place for the last few months, working with and for the 27 member states. So we're all working together. We've signed two uh, contracts. We've concluded the negotiations on another four. The aim of this is to have as broad a portfolio as possible in order to have at least one safe and mm -hmm. effective vaccine. The, I would, um, being very cautious, saying that if all goes well, and we know with clinical trials that you can have uh, a lot of twists and turns along the way, mm -hmm. we could have a safe and effective vaccine by... Uh, late 2020 or early 2021, but with every caution. Well, the uh, Belgian health minister told Belgian media recently that she thinks Belgians can expect to have the first vaccine by March 2021. Do you think that's perhaps a little bit too soon? I'm not able to really give dates. What we're doing is following up very closely with the European Medicines Agency, the, the phase three clinical trials. Uh, and uh, we hope to be able to have uh, more definite news on this as these are completed uh, in the following uh, one to two months. Uh, there's a civil, some civil liberties issues that have come out of this pandemic, as we all know, anti-mask uh, movements, I think we can call them in general. Um, for example, big demonstrations in Berlin, uh, thousands of people rallying against the restrictions in Germany. Some of them broke into their parliament. Uh, do you have sympathy with people who say that their civil liberties are being infringed by restrictions on their movements, restrictions on their activities, on their ability to do business? In a public health crisis, what is of primary importance is actually safety and protecting citizens' health. Um, I fully, I'm fully aware of these movements and these, uh, uh, the, the reactions that we're seeing across Europe. I think that this is also a responsibility for member states and for ourselves, and I have also flagged, flagged this uh, yesterday. There needs to be communication. We need to fight misinformation and fake news. There is a lot of misinformation and fake news that there is no such thing as a COVID-19 pandemic mm -hmm. and that uh, uh, we, we are not safe, uh, made safer by wearing masks. We need to fight this at all levels. And I'm already working with the social media platforms for this. But we need to tackle this at every level, because really, it is putting a lot of uh, lives at risk, and especially those most vulnerable among us. And uh, what are you hearing back from those social media platforms at this point? Are they prepared to, for example, take down posts they that are, are deemed to be fake news? They are they are extremely help. They are extremely supportive. I already had a meeting with Twitter. I have a meeting with Facebook on 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 Monday. They are extremely supportive of this. Whatever we have uh, advised so far, and all our recommendations are based on science. They're based on scientific evidence. We have been extremely clear about this from the beginning. And although I can understand that societies and people and citizens are tired, and there is a COVID uh, nineteen. 
19 fatigue, we need to continue taking all the measures necessary to protect ourselves and those more vulnerable ar around us until we have a safe and effective vaccine. All right, I'd just like to ask you one final question then, uh, as European Health Commissioner, uh, about EU freedom of movement, all the border closures that we saw at the start of the pandemic. If infections do keep rising, as you've predicted, do you believe that there's anything to stop member states from closing their borders up again, as they did in March? Uh, that's a really very, very important question. We, we, freedom of movement is extremely important uh, within the European Union. And within the pandemic, citizens need to have some level of predictability and the sense of control so that businesses and citizens uh, can, can start to uh, work effectively. Uh, so we came up with a proposal over uh, two weeks ago to member states so that they could align and harmonize the color coding they use for travel, for quarantines, so that they could have uh, this sense of predictability for citizens. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, member states have not agreed on this yet, and I called out to them yesterday to really move forward with this as quickly as possible, because this predictability will greatly enhance the way that citizens are able to travel and the way that businesses are able to work. All right, well, we will leave it there then. Thank you so much for your time, Stella Kyriakides, uh, the European Commissioner for Health. Thank you. And thanks to you for watching the programme as well. Hope to see you soon here on France 24 for more European news.